have shown they're prepared to do that. With that in mind, Mr. Mayor, I did write down a form of words which I will read to Council and move when it's considered appropriate. Council recognises that in practical, the practical, pro practical problems of introducing the scheme as proposed uh, overcome the issues that need to be addressed. Council believes that all of us from local groups willing to work on the sorry, reduction of dog fouling should be taken up as an alternative. I move that at appropriate times to that. Leslie Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll only take um, a, a minute because clearly I realise that we only have 15 minutes to debate this. Um, but, um, first of all, can, can I just thank Ms. Ashworth as others have done? Um, first of all, um, a slight compliment for this council, really. This council is pretty good at one thing, um, Mr. Mayor, and that is alienating the residents that they purport to represent. <laughs> And now again, they're doing it here to responsible to Mr. Mayor. They are doing it again to responsible dog owners. I'm a dog owner. I'm a responsible dog owner, and personally, I take great affront to the fact that myself, together with thousands of other rural residents, are going to be hit, as Councillor Gilchrist says, with a blunt instrument, because it is the it is the dog owners who do not pick up after their dogs who are causing the problem, which. Um, clearly, we, we all know affects children if uh, they come into contact with dog faeces. Um, a, a lot has been said, and I think the leader of the council already just said that we, we have a duty because with public health issues, uh, we have to do something. Well, the public health issues that I seem to meet, more so than anything, is the fact that many people suffer from loneliness in this borough. And I can set my watch from where I live to see the, the many, particularly older people, and um, as quite rightly, loneliness doesn't just apply to older people, but predominantly older people who walk past my house every day, who take their dogs out, pick up after them, and they are there because it's the only social interaction that they get, probably in that day, and for most of them in that week. So, Mr Mayor, I fully support what Councillor Blakely is moving here tonight, and I hope that the Council will, will agree to that, Mr Mayor. Yes, I've heard what Councillor Gilchrist's motion is, but we're, we're still in the dark of what Councillor Blakely's proposal is, and we're debating, we seem to be debating something they know about that we don't know about. I think we have time for one more speaker, so I'm going to call Councillor Mike Sullivan. You've got about two minutes, Councillor Sullivan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Just to bring some clarity to, to this debate. I've got, I've got evidence, there's 7 million dog owners in this country, 7 million. So when we're talking about a small minority um, who are not responsible dog owners, we're talking about a fair amount of people here on the, on the Wirral. Um, it's 7 million nationwide, I might add, not on Wirral. But it's a lot of dog owners, and the irresponsible dog owners are a lot of dog owners. Now I've got, I've personally, over the last 40 years, we played a football team in Heswell, a, a team of doctors, I might add. One of them got an injury, which was a cut. It was infected by dog feces that was on the pitch. My grandson, who, who trains in Prenton, they'd been um, shocked, and the, the training had to stop because of dogs chasing the balls. Royden Park, my, another grandchild of mine, who's terrified of going into Royden Park because he's seen dogs attacking dogs. All the th things that Phil Davis mentioned tonight. So I don't think it's a blunt instrument. We are, and I, I've seen people crying, Chris. I've seen people coming into Pensby Library, elderly people with the, with the walking frames, covered in dog feces, who are so upset because they're too infirm to, to bend down to clean them. So it is a real problem on the world. It is a real problem. You can shake your heads, but it is. And this responsible council is trying to do something about it. 
I don't think that the things that have been put forward are draconian in any sense. I think it's a start to try and... There's, how, many, how many have signed a petition? There's a lot more people out there who are supporting the council. There's a lot more there. There's a lot more people out there supporting the council. And what they're trying to do is to clean up our streets and our beaches of, of dog fouling and everything else that's happening in the past. It's not banning our PSPO order. It's not banning any dogs from anywhere. It's trying to, it's trying to stop what's going on and I support the council Evidence. in what they're doing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor to move his motion. Amendment, I should say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the council recognises the massive opp opposition to the introduction of a PSPO as a method to control dogs and their owners <coughs> across the border. Council recognises the work carried out by Willow Good Dogs and peaceful protest Willow Dog Bands, pointing out that the vast majority of dog owners act in a re responsible and respectful manner. Council also recognises the applause the previous cabinet member, former councillor Matthew Patrick, for his actions in withdrawing the ban from our beaches, and while accepting the part of the proposals, particularly with regard to cemeteries and children's play areas, are sensible, <coughs> it is clear a blanket PSPO is using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Therefore, council resolves to withdraw the proposals for a blanket PSPO will, and instead, Use its resources to target irresponsible dog owners through an educational program <coughs> while continuing to use its important contract debt to issue fixed penalty notices when approved. Yeah. This copy is here, Mr. Mayor. Do you have a second, Councillor Lately? Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So that's um, <coughs> Councillor Paul Hayes. So, Councillor Gilchrist, would you like to just repeat what you read to us before? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had it written down as the debate took place. Council recognises that there are practical problems in introducing this scheme as proposed. Council believes that all offers from local groups willing to work on the reduction of dog fouling should be taken up as an alternative. Okay, do you have a second, then? Second, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Dave Mitchell. Uh, would you like to read out yours again, Councillor Phil Davis? So, so my, my motion uh, reads as follows. M mindful that proposals on the PSPO have still to be um, finalised, uh, Council agrees to note this, to thank Ms Ashworth for uh, uh, her petition, to note this petition and consider the content as part of the consultation uh, on the proposals uh, to introduce PSPO uh, and Cabinet will uh, report um, next month uh, on, on our recommendations. Thank you. Yes. So we're now going to uh, vote on the amendments followed by the motion. So the first amendment to vote on is Councillor Blakely's. Yes, Councillor Gilchrist. On a procedural matter, Mr. Mayor, I introduce my onto the floor the wording first. I'm happy to do it. You're happy to do it, If If that's what the, the head of the law thinks should happen, I did say at the outset I had a form of words to move at the appropriate time. So I did move. Councillor Blake, we, uh, you indicated first. Do you want to go first or second? First. You'd like to go first, so we'll vote on Councillor Gilchrist's amendment, uh, Councillor Blakely's amendment first, and you've asked for a card vote. And don't forget you need to press your buttons at the same time as your name is called. Mr. Blair. Yes, uh, Councillor Caribbean. Well, I agree we're going to vote on both of these issues. Councillor Blakely, you're going to vote on both of these issues. Yes, so, Councillor Green. I, 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 in supporting you and your decision, Mr. Mayor, it should be pointed out people all said they were going to do it. But it was Councillor Blakely who was proposed and seconded formally. 
before Phil raised the point. So can we all just get on the boat? Councillor Kelly, 
Gates. Councillor Lewis. Councillor McManus. Councillor Meaden. Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Mooney. Councillor Musbrad. Councillor Norway. Against. Councillor Bogle. Councillor Rennie. Councillor Rowlands. Councillor Smith. Councillor Spriggs. Councillor Stapleton. Councillor Stewart. Against. Councillor Sullivan. Against. Councillor Sykes. Councillor Usher. Against. Councillor Walsh. Against. Councillor Watt. Not voting. Councillor Whittingham. Against. Councillor Irene Williams. Councillor Jerry Williams. Councillor Steve Williams. Councillor Williamson. And Councillor Wood. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, can I just ask a, a point of procedure? What happens in this vote if someone shouts for and presses the against button? Which one? Which one is recorded, Mr. Mayor? I'm, I'm informed that the result is as spoken. As spoken. against 36 abstentions one so that amendment is lost <laughs>
as previously announced, it is the vote as spoken which is taken as correct, but it is believed that three members actually pressed the opposite button from the way they spoke. But it will be So, can we please try and get it right this time, and we move to the second amendment, the one in the name of Councillor Bill Gilchrist. So this is a straightforward button pressing vote, yes? <coughs> so the vote is now open.
And on the motion, votes in favour 36, votes against 26, abstentions 1. The motion is therefore carried. Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask the Leader of the Council if he will review the decision to have the guillotine made 30, given the debacle that we've just been through on this council review? We've lost at least quarter of an hour of uh, debating time in this council, which is very, very limited throughout the year. The answer is no, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Next item on our agenda is item five, public questions. I'm advised there are no public questions that have been received. <coughs> yes, Councillor Blakely. At this point, could I... Could I move suspension mm -hmm. a standing order 10, brackets 2B and 11? In order to ask a question of Councillor Abbey, a district spokesperson for the Combined Authority Transport Committee. Do you want to do it at this point or will you come to members' questions later? <laughs> this is. Are we on? Oh, sorry. Oh, wrong, wrong place, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> So we come to item six, leaders, <coughs> executive members and chairs reports. Item six on pages 45 to 70 of the agenda contains the reports of the executive members and the overview and scrutiny annual report. Cabinet members and scrutiny chairs will not present their reports, which will be taken as read, and the council is invited to receive and vote these reports. There will be an allocated maximum of 45 minutes for questions to the leader, cabinet members and chairs. These questions must be confined to the contents of the reports and can be asked in any order. Questioners, please ensure that your question is no longer than two minutes. The total number of questions on each one of these reports will not exceed five. Now, are there any questions which councillors wish to ask in respect to these reports? Fifteen minutes. Forty-five minutes. Get it right. Forty-five minutes. Councillor Chris Blakely. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have six questions. Uh, six. Are you only allowed one, Councillor Blakely? No, I'm not allowed to ask any questions of any one at a time. One at a time? I thought it was all when you stood up, Mr. Mayor, we should ask everything of all questions. Apparently, it's one at a time, you'll get an answer. All right, Mr. Mayor. Okay, let's see which one I want to ask. <laughs> uh, cabinet member for transports, Mr. Mayor. Is a cabinet member aware? that his officers have written to community groups who are in Christmas light display in the towns, informing them that from 2019 they'll be charged for the electricity they use. Will he give council assurance tonight that in the spirit of Christmas he will withdraw this miserly screwed light construction, recognising the great work these community groups do in accompanying people to visit and shop in our towns? Councillor Whittingham.
Poll tax. Poll tax. Poll tax. Poll tax. Poll tax. Okay, if you, um, there's that question put to me in, why it seems it's quite long, I'll certainly provide them with a response. Uh, with respect, Mr. Mayor, uh, the questions to cabinet members do not have to be in writing. They can be verbal. That's the point of question time. I'll repeat the question again if you want me to. Okay. Can the cabinet member advise me in writing how much uncollected and unrecoverable poll tax, otherwise known as the community charge, introduced in 1990, has been written off by this council since 1991? And does she agree that the policy of non-payment pursued and encouraged by a previous leader of this council was reckless. Councillor Alan Bray. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I hope to ask two questions. The first one is to uh, the leader of the council, and um, it concerns the visit, uh, the recent visit of the giants, which obviously brought so much pleasure to, to many people. Um, but can uh, Councillor Davis tell us what was the total cost for Wirral of staging Liverpool's dream? Um, and is there an estimate for the numbers who turned out to uh, watch the Wirral part of the performance? And finally, how much is there an estimate for how much additional revenue is generated for Wirral's economy by this visit? Councillor Davis. Thank you, sir. Can I thank Councillor Brain for advance focus on this question? Um, I, I think the Giants was a fantastic event for Wirral. I, I just want to take this opportunity while I'm, I'm on my feet, uh, Mr. Mayor, to thank all our officers for the wonderful uh, work that they did, uh, both on the, um, the visitor economy and tourism side, and also the uh, staff who um, made sure that the, uh, the borough was kept so clean and uh, on the day, etc. All the, the officers of this council, I think, deserve huge thanks from uh, every member of this council. And I'm just in, in terms of uh, Councillor Brown's question, um, there is an evaluation uh, being done of the, the Giants, and so there'll be a detailed report which I will share with Council as soon as that's available. But initial estimates are that 80,000 80, people came to see the Giants' spectacular event in New Brighton uh, on the Friday, 5th of October, um, with 1.3 million estimated across the whole weekend, so that includes the Liverpool. Um, uh, days as well. Um, and, and obviously, as we know, the images of, of those iconic images of New Brighton were, were beamed globally uh, across the world, and that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, response on, on social media has been extremely positive. Um, in terms of the uh, e economic benefits, as I say, we're, we're having an evaluation done at the moment, so I haven't got the precise figures, but just to give you a benchmark. Uh, Mr. Mayor, when the Giants last visited Liverpool in 2014, approximately 1 million uh, watched the event and it generated uh, 46 million pounds uh, of benefits for the local economy. So I am estimating that the benefits will be in that, in that order. But given that it was the last time that Royal Deluxe um, runs this kind of event, I, ex I expect the figures to be even higher than that. And in terms of the cost of Royal Council, they're in the region of 20,000 20, to zero, 20,000 pounds, with the majority of the funding, uh, the rest of the funding provided by Liverpool City Region Combined Authority, Metro Mayor, and, and we got a sizable grant from the, from the Arts Council. Um, and as part of our contribution, the Council has made some capital improvements in New Brighton to host uh, made this event and, and other events. Uh, in the future. But as I say, when I've got a full detailed uh, copy of the evaluation report, I will share that with all members of the Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Jeff Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question to the Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Health. Uh, reading your report, uh, Christine, it was clear that um, there's a lot of good cooperation going on with the NHS. And so I wonder whether you would agree with me in welcoming the additional two million that has been announced this month from Wirral University Teaching Hospital to assist with demand pressures this winter, and will you be involved in the planning to ensure the money is used to best effect? Councillor Chris Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, I was grateful for more money, and as you know, we work across the health economy, health and social care together. Um, 
when it comes to winter crashes and anything else. So we will all be involved and it will be reported to the health and wellbeing board. Councillor Andrew Gardner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The question to the Cabinet Member for Housing and Planning. Can the Cabinet Member tell us why he believes the local plan has not been produced for 14 years despite being mandatory? And what steps has he taken to ensure that future plans will be updated on time? Councillor George Davis. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gardner. Um, 14 years since the last plan was done, uh, and my colleague, Lady Kett, leader of the council, just mentioned before, I was here when I was kind of dealt with the first time, and there was three leaders of the council at that time, sorry, three leaders who worked together with the groups to ensure the Human Development Plan came into act uh, in 2000. So we've had um, the plan. Um, yes, we are going behind the schedule on this one. It, it won't go any further backwards, I can assure you on that under my jurisdiction. We will make sure that the, the plan is met in the correct time for the government who are asking for the actual thing to be on their desk by next uh, year in May 19, 2019. And that will be established. Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, question to the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth. In relation to the uh, Department of Business, Energy and Industry Strategy, the Cash Instrumental in the Development of the Eureka Centre just down the road from here. I'd like to ask the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Employment, will she be looking for funds for the wider visitor economy, given the comments that were made by the leader, the amount of people that came into the world, the uh, giants? Uh, we know uh, from the select committees that those employees of uh, the council at work Supporting the wider economy for the visitor brings in a substantial amount of uh, revenue into the authority. Uh, will the cabinet member be looking to increase that particular department? Councillor Andrew Davis. Um, yeah, thank you for your question. You're right, the, the visitor economy um, plays a substantial part, doesn't it, in our, in our economy as well. Um, it, it's very important in terms of a whole number of roles um, and professions and employment. So we're always um, looking for ways that we can um, increase, you know, the spend that people come here, that they come here more often, that they stay here for longer as well. Um, that's why when we launched our Imagine We're All strategy in February. Um, we're delighted with the number of different events that we've had. This year we've had the Toll Ships, um, you know, where we had 100,000 visitors. Um, of course, we have the Giants as well. Um, we have got the River of Light Festival um, coming up in November. And we're really, really proud that next year the Wirral is Liverpool City Region's Borough of Culture. And I know that the um, team are working really, really hard on pulling together um, a programme. Um, so there's there's lots of things that are you know planned and are going to be forthcoming. So thank you for your question. Councillor David Burgess Joyce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a question from the cabinet member for Jobs and Growth, uh, Angela Davis. Uh, oh, Angela. Um, the cabinet member speaks.